Happy Halloween. You're watching PA Harness Week. I'm Charlotte McBride. This week, I'm channeling my inner Sandy from Greece. Steve and Heather are also joining in on the Halloween fun. We've got a great show for you featuring some familiar faces, some familiar names, including Andy Miller and Corey Callahan. Those drivers plus a lot more are coming up. Here's what you can expect to see in this next half hour. We've got a big upset to show you in the International Trot at Yonkers. All the details coming up. Plus, speaking of trotters, Jimmy Tactor was going for the trotting triple crown. You'll see how he did, and a huge upset at Woodbine. One of our local drivers was a big part of it. And you don't want to miss this great finish at Pocono on Saturday. All the best races from the Poconos and right here at Harris, Philadelphia, is coming your way. Better shape up and watch the show. Keep it here. Don't go. Well, that was my best rendition of Sandy, but keep it right here because the Halloween edition of PA Harness Week is starting right now on Comcast Sportsnet. They're off. Nothing different as you can see, right? Oh, look yeah. at this. What we no. got here, darling? Yeah. Who do we got right here? Oh, I am Sweet Lou. Yes, I'm sweet dressed up Lou? as Sweet Lou. Now, remember a couple years ago, I was foiled again. Now I decided to be Sweet Lou, you see here. And my wings are on because I can fly. Goodness gracious. And you know what? She's a free-for-aller. Can you think of something better that a girl can be than a free-for-aller? <laughs> Dude, I thought you were going to wear a mask for our Halloween show. Well, well, I changed my mind. I figured I'll be myself. You know, I'm only 37 years old, and I think I look pretty darn good. What do you know? Oh! All right, let's get to the action, shall we, darling? I think Sweet that's a good idea. All yeah. right, hold on. Whoa, 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 this trick is from Loco. Let's okay. do the first race, shall we? Big one, too, at Yonkers. That's right. Now, of course, I'm a pacer, but we're going to check out some trotting action. It was the International Trot Preview is what they are calling it. Now, the purse is $250,000. It goes a mile and a quarter. So remember, they're going to start at the backside of the oval. Lots of hype with this race. Number six is Sebastian K. He's the favorite. Happens to be the fastest trotter in harness racing history. Like Number him. one, a Commander Crow. He's an invader oh, from overseas. Now, he's an 11-year-old gelding. Okay, and old he's man, I like old man. Never raced in America before. I'm not a girl. Don't <laughs> insinuate nothing. And now let me just tell you, okay, five million dollars in purses that Commander Crow has made. So it's amazing. This is his first start in the U.S. Um, not more than four again. Well, the um, others, you know what? Old Fart Lou. <laughs> I'm going to take you to the nursing home if you don't shut up. Okay. Now the others um, are eight to one, ten to one ballpark, including number two, a bee magician. She's a lone lady in the race. Sebastian K has made a break. It's Commander Crow with early pressure on the outside by Arch Madness. Arch Madness up to take the lead from Commander Crow. Next and third is Be a Magician as they approach the quarter pole. It's three lengths back to Natural Herbie, fourth. Parked out fifth is Not Afraid. And then comes Archangel Obrigado. And back trotting but trailing is Sebastian K. 27-4 for the opening quarter as they swing around the clubhouse turn first time and head to the back stretch. It is Arch Madness and Brennan at 7-1. They lead it by two on the Invader Commander Crow. Down toward the inside, it's Be a Magician third. Not Afraid is settled in fourth. It's a gap of two and a half to Natural Herbie fifth. Archangels on the outside sixth. Seven links from the lead. Down toward the inside, Sebastian K and Obrigado. They went a half mile, 57 and one. On the far turn the second time in the International Trot Preview, led by Arch Madness. Arch Madness from Commander Crow. Be a Magician saves ground third. As they head by us the second time on the outside, Natural Herbie fourth between rivals. Not afraid, Sebastian K at the inside in very tight quarters. Then comes Archangel and Obrigado. It's wide open, and Commander Crow comes out of the pocket. Three quarters and one, 26 and two. As they make their way around the clubhouse turn, second and final time. 
Arch Madness still shoulders the load. Leads it by two and a half on Commander Crow. Be a Magician toward the inside third. Natural Herbie started the one ravel fourth. Fifth toward the inside is not afraid. On the outside, Archangel is sixth and six lengths from the lead. Obrigado. And Sebastian K is the trailer as they get to the mile point. And still on the point here is Arch Madness. The mile went in 155 and 1. They're on the final turn in the International Trot Preview. So it's Arch Madness trying to spring the upset. Commander Crow will have every chance. On the outside, Natural Herbie plugs away. And they're into the stretch. It is Arch Madness. Commander Crow. Natural Herbie's on the outside. Continue to come on. Here comes Natural Herbie looking for a seam. Be a magician. Far outside. Oh, Bergato down to the line. Natural Herbie. Obviously, everything changes when Sebastian. Sebastian K goes off stride in that first turn. Arch Madness, he takes the front. Commander Crow, he's sitting second. Now, the big move comes when Natural Herbie comes first up. Now, up the backside, you think he's totally going to get tired. And then coming to the stretch, you're thinking, okay, Commander Crow is going to come up the passing lane and win. He's totally got this race. But that doesn't happen because Natural Herbie, he totally goes on. He wins. He pays Herbie will. Horse yes. Herbie win a big yeah. race. <laughs> 21 60 and his time is 224 and 4. Remember, is a mile and a quarter. Um, now, Verlin Yoder is the owner, the driver, and the trainer on this horse. And he's been in, involved in harness racing since 2004. He used to work on RVs. So this is a dream come true for him. So congratulations. Who don't know Verlin Yoder? Yeah. <laughs> now, Commander Crow was second. Be a magician. She took third. I got another race for you. How about this? Race number seven at Woodbine was the $565,000 Governor's Cup for two-year-old pacing Colts. Number six, Art Speak, who's been on a downward trend lately, is going to try to get back in the win column with Scott Zero, and he was three to five in odds on. Number two, Pierce Hanover, nine to two, with Jody Jamison, number three. The Lions again with Yannick Kingraw was five to one, and with a call, our buddy Ken Middleton. And Pierce Hanover will brush to the front powerfully. Back into second goes Lost for Word. Moving up into third now comes Lions again for Jangra, and Art Speak is perfectly placed on cover by Zeron from in fourth. Then it's back fifth inside to Blood Brothers. Sixth up on the move comes Ark Hanover. Seven to the outside is Go Daddy Go. Then it's back to Tracer Hanover locked up. They come to three quarters, and still there, Pierce Hanover. Pierce Hanover, the leader by a length and a half. As he's by three quarters, blazing by there in 121 and four, Art Speak rips off cover, and Zeron feeds him racetrack now. Still on that lead is Pierce Hanover. Here comes Art Speak bearing down on that leader. Art Speak is brushing up and coming on. And here's Art Speak on the outside. Art Speak moved back to the head of the two year old class, springing off live cover to one and a length in 115 4. Number seven, go, daddy, go. Off at 11 to 1 with Corey Callahan got second. And Pierce Hanover was third. More action from Woodbine and Yonkers and our horses and Sweet Lou and me when we come back. And we'll take a look at Pocono. Oh boy. Better than you facing off with Word Power, who's just about even now, only about a half a head away. When it's your time to shine, what will you do? At Mohegan Sun, wherever tonight takes you, it's your time to shine. Hello there, welcome back to the special Halloween edition of PA Harness Week. She's sweet and low. I'm Orville Franklin. Uh... I'm sweet and low. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Hootin' Lou. You know who it was, so it's easy to tell. And I am, believe it or not, not wearing a mask. I've had a very tough week this week. <laughs> yeah. All right, as promised, let's go to action in Pocono, and Heather's got that for you. Yes, I do. We've got um, non-winners, 22,500. Last five starts, the first is $21,000. Number three is Word Power, taking a step up in class, but the fans still have a lot of faith in him. He's the favorite at four to five. Then there's two seven to two co-favorites uh, for second. And then that's number one, Better Than You with Andrew McCarthy. And number five, Giddy Up Black Fly. Mm. Love that horse's name. George Napolitano Jr. is in the bike. Better Than You has it by 
by about a length. That's Word Power first over for Simon Alar, trying to reel in the leader. Inside a stitch in time. Giddy up, Black Fly second over, is about three and a half away and moving up. Then it's Simon's Artist boxed in fifth. Third over six, Fleming M. And then Art A. Canover, Delaware Hanover, trying to come on at the back. Better than you, still holding tight. Three quarters, 122 and three. 27 and three, third panel. Better than you, facing off with Word Power, who's just about even now, only about a half ahead away. Inside a stitch in time, still there. Giddy up, Black Fly fourth. Top of the stretch, better than you and Word Power toe to toe here. Slight lead, better than you. Word Power still coming after him here. Better than you, Word Power. These two inseparable. Word Power, better than you to the line. It is a stitch in time. Bus out of the gate from post seven. Then he yields two. Better than you. Pass the stands. Now they pace a quarter. Okay, that second quarter in 29 seconds. I don't even know pacers went in 29 seconds in a quarter anymore. <laughs> but they did in this one. So when is the battle going to begin? I will tell you, Word Power pulls first up. And then he and a better than you, they are just stride for stride coming down the lane. It is so close. I mean, announcer Jim Bavilia can't even tell you know which one is the winner but it was word power winning by a nose and 150 and three better than you second a giddy up black fly was third well jim Bavilla, you can't figure out who won he shouldn't get paid for that night should he <laughs> <laughs> just my opinion you know all right the next race nine on saturday four to five year old claiming handicap 30 down to 25. number nine bj's ramo with georgie nap seven to five number seven L.A. Camp Charger, 7-2 with Simon Allard. Number four to beach his own with Tyler Beater, 5-1, and here's the call. Not going to be an easy lead for B.J.'s Ramon because mock and music on the outside. Applying a vice grip here for Joe Pavia Jr., only a half length away. Contraband handover resting a bit in the pocket, third. Second over now, that's Wallace with Don't Tell Rusty. Then it's L.A. Camp Charger, fifth, saving ground, but no room to roam at the moment. Third over sixth, Rude Boy. Then Humility is seventh, three quarters, 123-1. 28 even third panel. BJ's Ramo repels the charge of mock and music. Contraband and overtakes second back. Don't tell Rusty trying to close out three wide. Top of the stretch. BJ's Ramo holding on to the lead now by about two. Far outside. Don't tell Rusty full of pace late. BJ's Ramo digging hard. Don't tell Rusty coming up strong. BJ's Ramo. Don't tell Rusty it's tight. It's BJ's Ramo. BJ's Ramo. Left and got parked to the quarter and 26 flat before clearing. From there, he cut the rest of the mile, but had to withstand a furious late charge for number two, Don't Tell Rusty. I won't if you won't. Off at 11 to 1 with Kevin Wallace to win at a neck and 151 and 2. LA Cam Charger, another late back in third. And now with the 10th on Saturday, here's Sweet Lou. That's right, okay. And oh, I happen to be an open pacer, racing oh. all over the country. Uh -huh. And these are the open pacers at Mohegan Sun of Pocono. Down to purses, $35,000. Mm. Number two, PH Supercam, better's choice at four to five, has won over half a million dollars in this year alone. And he's coming off of three wins in a row up at Yonkers. Then there's number seven, Aslan, uh, won the preferred just two starts back at Pocono. Number six, Speed again. This guy just won the top pace um, at uh, Harris, Philadelphia. Let me tell you, this is just a really great field. Speed again, still not being urged on there by ANAP, has the lead by about a length and a quarter. PH Supercam getting the excellent trip, dial or no dial. Now first over, a strong move for Mike Simons, gets up closer to the lead. Aslan starts to move on now into fourth, passing out uh, Camby Zipper. Big gap back to sixth and one and only. Three quarters, 121 and three, very fast on the back, 27 even. Speed again is still there on top by about a length and a quarter. PH Supercam hasn't budged. Dial or no dial drops back third, Aslan fourth. Top of the stretch, speed again, still there by a length and a half. PH Supercam pulls the pocket, tries to get to him now. Speed again, still there. PH Supercam all out starts to get closer, but it's speed again. Speed again and driver Anthony Napolitano, they make like a tree and leave. And then they do 
just cut out the fractions, and man, it is a Halloween finish. That means it was so close. It's Spooky. scary. Yeah, nice old man. You got it. <laughs> Pete, Superman got a great trip. He was just a neck back for second. Aslan was third. And when we come back, we'll check out action here in Harris, Philadelphia. And we'll also, our Charlotte McBride will catch up with Andy Miller, who got hurt back in April and is now back to the racing wars. We'll talk to Andy right after this. The world is full of compromises, but not here. Not on this day, not in this race, not in this sport. Every bet is a hope. Return on investment comes in seconds. This is Harness Racing. We welcome you to the Harness Racing Fan Zone. See it all for yourself. Feel it in all the passion. Share that experience with others. The Harness Racing Fan Zone puts you in the driver's seat. We are back for our Halloween edition of PA Harness Week, and as promised, our Charlotte McBride caught up with driver Andy Miller, one of the really good guys in our sport, who got a serious injury back in April, but now he's back, fully recovered, and let's see what Andy has to say about the future. All right, joining us, Andy Miller, we're glad to have you back with us on the show. You were you were out of commission for a while. Explain to me kind of what your injury was and what it took for you to get back in the bike. I, I had a pretty rough injury. I broke my back L1. It was a compression burst, and they had to put rods and screws in my back. So, and it's been six months, and I went through some therapy and stuff. I'm still not 100%, but I'm, I'm getting better. I'm probably 75%, but it feels good to be back in the bike and working again. Are you still feeling pain at all when you're out there? Uh, a little bit, a little bit, but the doctor told me that it's okay to go ahead and uh, start racing and try to strengthen it up and uh, just get back to work. When you have an injury like that, does it scare you? Uh, it scared me at the time, uh, but uh, now it doesn't really scare me anymore. Um, you know, I just get back and do what I have done for 30 years. Well, we're glad to have you back, and we wish you the best of luck. No Thank more injuries, you. right? No more injuries. <laughs> Thank you. All right, back to you guys. Thank you, Charlotte. Continued success coming back off that injury, Andy Miller. Okay, now Harris Philly, Friday's 11th. The co-feature is Sweet Lou. Blaze face, go ahead and do it. <laughs> yes, um, oh, by the way, um, they told me I'm going to stand stud next year, so maybe one of these fine ladies in this Ooh. next race I might have a date with. Yeah. The purse is $35,000. Now, there's a few millionaires in here. Nice. Number two, Andra Bet, favored at six to five. She's made over three million. Uh, number six, Rocklamation, second choice. She's made over two million. And then number eight, Somewhere Over Rainbow. She's won over a million, just over a million, okay? But she's also younger than the other two, so she's no slouch herself. Somewhere over Rainbow, up the challenge, Regal Electra for the lead. Inside Rocklamation is third. Up on the outside, Katie Sends left uncovered as Somewhere Over a Rainbow is cleared. The eight quarters, 123, rounding the final turn, and Somewhere Over a Rainbow opens up by five. Regal Electra's back to second, outside Katie Sen third. Off the cones, Rocklamation, Androvet swings off cover they straighten away for the stretch drive and somewhere over a rainbow leads by six proclamation was the first racy lady to take the front but then regal elector she's like okay um excuse me i'll have that thanks now they go to the half in 55 and four remember earlier in the show it's only like when does anybody ever pace a 29 second mm. okay yeah they did again in this one so <laughs> you know oh. whoa that's called strategy i think anyway um there's another lead change okay this is not a horse race it's a cat fight right so it's somewhere over rainbow she pounces first up she gets the lead crosses the wire in 150 and four it's been so long since she's seen the winner circle long shot here 37 dollars and 40 cents for the win and javette was second and katie said was third is she a millionaire Somewhere over Rainbow was already a million. I don't want a worthless wench going to be bred to sweet Lou. Sorry. Uh, yeah, tell me about it. Me neither. Thank you. Know? you. <laughs> Sunday's opener at Harris Philly, condition pace. Non winners of 8,500 last five. Number five, Voice of Truth for Corey Callahan. Three to five, but number one, Pappy's Pal off at five to one. The Attic Jing Rod got the enchilada, winning this heat and neck over Voice of Truth in 150 and one. Number two, Artist Rally at five to two shot with Dick Curdy. And number three, three swings. An 80 to 1 bottle with Montreal Teague dead heated for third. It was a harbinger of things to come. You like that word, darling? I love it. As Yannick Jingler recorded six, count them, six wins on the day. 
Stick around when we come back. Action to play from Yonkers and Woodbon in your face. Don't go away. Campbell and Nuncio by a length and a half. Tonight, it's ladies' night. The lights are low and the stakes are high. Sometimes ladies' night is just a date night in disguise. At Mohegan Sun, wherever tonight takes you, it's your time to shine. fans and welcome back to PA Harness Week. Sweet Lou and OF Lou right here. And we are going up to Yonkers to get the third jewel of Trotting's Triple Crown. It is the Yonkers Trot and Sweet Lou's got it for you. Thank you very much. Okay, $500,000 is the first. All eyes on this race because it is the third jewel, like you said, of the Triple Crown. And number two, Nuncio is in here. His main competition, who happens to be one of my stable mates, Garel Hanover. He was scratched, man. Sorry about that, dude. But ends up Nuncio Hanover, heavy, heavy favorite in here. How heavy? Okay, the next horse on the tote board in line is 20 to one. John Campbell's gonna pull the pocket right now with a big favorite Nuncio as they trot up the back stretch. In third is Datsuk. Expressive action is fourth. It's three lengths back to resolve in fifth, six off the lead in the shadow of the quarter pole. King City has one rival beat and that is long shot journey. Nuncio rolls to the lead. Nuncio's opening quarter mile was 29 seconds flat, one to nine here, as Nuncio looks for his 10th win on the season, leads it by a length and a half. Don Dorado's been delegated to the pocket. It's two lengths back to Dot Souk third. Expressive action trots in mid-pack, spotting this big favorite five and a half. And then comes Resolve, King City, and a daunting task for Journey, who trails the field in seven. They work their way to the half-mile pole and half-mile home in the Yonkers trot final. Campbell and Nuncio by a length and a half. Don Dorado right there keeping tabs from the pocket. The half mile, 58 and 4. Just a 29 and 4 second quarter with one lap to go. Third is Datsuk. Fourth toward the inside. Expressive action on the move. Journey's out of last place. And then comes Resolve. And King City is now the trailer. But Nunzio has padded his lead. Nunzio gives him the slip up the back stretch. Puts four lengths on Don Dorado as Charlie Norris takes Dot Souk to the outside third. Journey is advanced past expressive action. Three quarters and one, 27 and three on the final turn of the Yonkers Trot Final. And Nunzio has lead off stride when Don Dorado. Don Dorado's off stride and is off the course, and it's all Nunzio who turns into the stretch with a four length lead. Drifting out, but still in front and well clear of Dot Souk. It's about eight lengths back to expressive action, but the Yonkers Trot final goes to Nuncio. Nuncio and driver John Campbell win the Yonkers Trot on the front in 156 flat. This is the third time that John has won this big event for Jimmy Tactor, the trainer. It's his fourth time that he's won the Yonkers Trot. Actually, Ooh. this year was the Tactor Triple Crown for Trotters, all right? Tactor won the Hamiltonian with Churchston. Then he won the Kentucky Fraternity and now the Yonkers Trot with Nuncio. Nuncio. But whoa, where is Jimmy on this night? Oh yeah, um, he was in Canada because he won two gigantic races, the Goldsmith Maiden and the Valley Victory up in Canada. So I'm gonna have him clone so he can be many places at once. I think, you, you think he's happy. Absolutely. Next up, the sixth race in Yonkers, the $540,000 Messenger Final, the third jewel of Pacing's Triple Crown. Number five, Mick Wicked with Dave Miller was odds on it, one to two. Number four, Lions somewhere, four to one with Bert Miller. And the Ron Burke entry of one, all bets off, and one A, 45 red with Georgie Brennan with four, nine to two. And here's John Herman with a call. And all bets off, gonna have to buckle down now. All bets off by a length and a half. Lions somewhere has been shadowing the whole way. It's a gap of two. Then to Stevensville in third. On the outside, Mick Wicked fourth, but has to pick it up, as does Luck Be With You. About six off the lead as time begins to run out. National Dead is gapping toward the inside. Then Western Conquest and 45 Red has never been involved. Three quarters and one, 23 on the final turn in the Messenger Stakes final. And now some breathing room for all bets off who's opening up by four. A big move on the turn coming from Luck Be With You. But as they straighten away into the stretch, it is all bets off by five. 
All bets off, left like a shot, took command and aired, winning for fun on the engine in 151 and one. Number six, luck be with you. <laughs> off at six to one with Timmy Teacher was second. McWicked was a non-contentious third. All right, now I'm going to show you the Lady Mod, the purse for the final $150,000, and these are for three-year-old facing fillies. You Number love those ladies, don't you, sweet <laughs> Yes, I do. Number three, Act Now, one to five favorites. She won the limb last time out easily. And then a couple of my stable mates. Number one, Beautiful Lady and 1A, a La Note Hanover, both from the Burke Stable. On the far turn the first time, Brennan and Act Now endorsed here as the one to five favorite. And she bumps her lead up to three legs on Tyra toward the inside. Do your job. Fancy Desire going a tough trip on the outside. She's parked out fourth. A gap of two and a half to Scandalicious fifth as she vacates the cones. Down on the inside, Anna Gata. And then comes the beautiful lady, and trailing is Alanote Hanover. Act now gets a half mile in 56 and 4. 28 and 2 in that second quarter. One lap to go in the Lady Maud final for three row fillies, and the front end belongs to Act Now. Act Now flaunting her speed, and she leads it by two and a half on Tyra, trying to keep up with the favorite. It's a gap of two and a half to the tandem of Do Your Job inside of Fancy Desire, who's really laboring now. And then comes the beautiful lady in behind fillies, is Scandalicious, then Anagata, and Alanote Hanover, three quarters and one, 24 and three on the Final turn, and Act Now has fled the scene. Act Now has opened up by seven. Tyra left out of the gate very quickly. She took the early lead, but soon after, it was Act Now taking the front. Never an anxious moment for her. She ends up winning in 153 by five and a half lengths Ooh. with George Brennan in the bike. That's with a B, okay? With the trainer is Nick Drennan with a D. All right, you got that? Okay, I knew you would. Now, Fancy Desire. Um, she was all kinds of fancy first up. She ended up getting second. Huge effort by her. Beautiful lady took third. How about this one? Let's go out to Woodbine for the $464,000 Goldsmith made two year old trotting awesome fillies on display. Number four, Mission Brief and Yannick was one to five, mistake. but broke at the start but and got distance. Hello, Mission making this 10 horse filly beat anybody's race. When the smoke cleared, Smepsy off at 78 to one with Corey Callahan stood tall in the winner's circle, winning a length in 154 flat. Southern Bell was second, 13 to one with Paul McDonnell, and Juanita's Fury 56 to one with Steve Conner was third. Corey paid a hundred and fifty million dollars to win. <laughs> and we caught up with him to find out what it's like to win such a big race at such a long price. All right, Sandy here interviewing Corey Callahan today. Corey talking about Smexy, an amazing win for you at the Goldsmith Made. Take me through that. Yeah, you know, um, we got a little bit lucky. Um, when Yannick's Philly jumped, uh, I, I saw her going out of there and she had made a break. So, you know, our plan was to push off from the gate anyway. And we got a good, a very good trip. We got to follow Paul right to the, you know, the head of the lane, and, and she went by. It was a good mile, 54. So I was really impressed with the effort. I mean, even though she paid big dollars. Now, what can we expect to see more from her? Because that was a great win. What do you expect to see? Yeah, like I said, that was that was a really good mile. I mean, 54 for a two-year-old trotting yeah. filly. Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure they're expecting big, th big things from her. Explosive matter is, has done pr pretty well as a sire. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm hoping she goes on and does well for them. All right, perfect. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> Back to you guys. Congratulations, Corey. I wonder if you put a couple of bucks on his own on that 80 to 1 shot. We don't know. We'll have to find out. And that's going to do it for this edition of PA Harness Week. It's our annual Halloween edition. Just Heather and I being silly as per usual. And I'm going to take this and go, there, that's better. Oh, God. And for all, let you know, hey, it was a mess. Put the mask back on. <laughs> and for all of us here, Bruce Casella, Charlotte McBride, Mabu, Heather Vitale, I'm Steve Ross, reminding you to pick up the pace, just a taste, and get yourself high on harness. It's only natural. Whee!